Hi, this is Mike from We Build Stuff. This video is part of a series of build logs following the construction of a bar top arcade that uses a 28 inch screen. Follow along for the steps I use and see the process I take when building. Rather than skipping over parts of the build, I will be showing almost every single step, which is why this series has been split into multiple videos. Please check out the playlist link in the description, like, subscribe to show support for this channel. Topics covered in this video are routing for the screen, attaching screen to the arcade, attaching more pieces, magnets for the back door, using wood filler, and drilling the button holes. So using the router, I'm going to route out some slots for the TV to fit into. I don't have to do this at all if I don't want to, but this just gives it a nice touch, and this is my personal preference. With that first little slot eyeballed, I'm using that as a gauge to figure out how far away my router needs to be from my router guide. This is just any piece of straight wood that it can run against and get your nice slot that you're going for. I set the depth to about half the thickness of the MDF. It's okay if you cut a little bit wide because that leaves a nice little bit of wiggle room for the TV. Doing the same thing to the other side, to the top, and then I'm going to be doing a custom piece for the bottom. Go nice and slow so that you have full control over what you're doing. So for the bottom, I just traced out the bottom of the TV onto a little piece of scrap. I'm going to cut that out on a bandsaw. You can use a jigsaw or any tool you have if you're going to choose this method. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, I like to have a little bit of wiggle room. I can use spacers or just make sure it's clamped in place nicely. After I've got my main spot here, I'm just going to get rid of the excess. Just eyeballed it. Again, if you're using MDF, make sure you're wearing some sort of dust protection to keep this stuff out of your lines. Fits nicely. Next thing on the back is I'm going to be doing my custom clamping system that has worked for me a few times. This involves doing a couple of these nice strips here, making some slots for my T-nuts to go behind, and then I'm gonna create some wood blocks that are gonna hold everything together. Again, this is just the way I do it. Make sure you're using glue that is gonna be strong enough for this. Again, this is my custom mixture. You can get this at most grocery stores. my detailed blueprints. I spent hours and hours on those. So just using some, again, 2x4s or whatever blocks you've got, I'm going to be using these to hold the TV in place. Cut them out with whatever tools you need. This bandsaw has seen better days. It doesn't cut perfectly straight. It always ends up cutting on a bit of an angle. I think I need to do some fixing up with that. Watch your fingers, use a push stick when necessary. So now with all these pieces together, this should start to make a little bit of sense as to what I'm doing. This will all be removable so I can take the TV on and off if needed. It will probably never get taken off, but I like to build all of my projects in a way that can be taken apart, have changes or upgrades and stuff like that. I'm going to do a quick test fit to see if I need to make any changes before mounting. This fits nicely so I can move on to the next step. So 
the next thing I can do is lay out my mounting holes again. This is all modular. I can take this whole piece on and off. That's my plan. So I'm going to use T-nuts again to hold it together onto the arcade cabinet. I initially drilled with my smaller drill bit. I think it was the 316. But then I'm actually going to drill them a little bit larger so I have a little bit of wiggle room. It makes it easier to install so it doesn't have to be a perfect fit when I put the bolts on. We've seen this method in the other videos where I drill my holes and then I just use those holes as a guide to drill the next ones bigger. I wonder if I should invest in some smaller hammers to fit in small places. These little blocks, when nailed and glued in, will prevent the T-nuts from accidentally falling out. If there's really any issue with the T-nut in the future, you can just take a chisel and grind or cut them off. I need to cut a special angled piece. I have a little visitor circling and watching my every move, so I need to be careful here. You don't have to cut angles on all your stuff. You're not going to see this at the back anyways, but I like to do these nice little finishing touches. Any little gaps that you see will be covered with wood fill. Again, use your custom adhesive to hold things together and nail it in. This piece is the speaker mount under artwork marquee piece thing. Basically, these are where the speakers are gonna be mounted underneath the artwork marquee. Two holes to hold it together. And what do you think I'm gonna to use to hold it onto the arcade? Probably T-nuts. I'm doing these test fits also with finishing washers on there. That's how it will look when it's all done. The whole thing is really starting to come together now. I'm very happy with the progress of this project. This piece is going to get glued permanently to that last one. They can come on and off together. glue and brad nail that in just for a nice flush fit. What do you want? To hold my back door shut I'm going to be using magnets. I picked these up at Home Depot for a couple bucks. They're super simple and easy to use. I like to drill pilot holes anytime I have to use screws to prevent splitting the wood pilot hole should be smaller than the drill that you're using. Using the supplied screws, I'm going to be attaching this metal piece to the back door. I want to make sure that whatever screw I'm using is not longer than the width of the material. Does that make sense? I don't want it sticking out the back. Give him a shake. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. Now I'm going to use wood filler to fill in all the little spots that uh, I might want to blend together or fill in the little brad nail holes. This is a little bit time consuming, so I'm going to be skipping most of it. Next up is the button holes and the hole for the joystick to stick out. This paper template I originally used on my very first arcade video. I found that on Instructables and I know it's circulating the internet. Lay out your control panel the way that you want, not necessarily the way that I do it. I always try to do a little center punching before drilling. It just allows me to be a bit more accurate. 
I'm laying out the spots for the front control panel buttons. That is on a separate piece. Again, that's my design. Not necessarily the way you have to do it. The pilot holes help guide my Forstner bit in when I do my big drill. Again, this is optional, but this is just the way that I do things. It makes it easier for me, and that's the way you should do it. Always work whatever is easiest for you. Handle your joystick super carefully. Or not. Bought these on eBay. And I'm going to be mounting them with four bolts and nylock nuts. Take your time when laying this out so that you don't have crooked joysticks. I'm going to be countersinking these so that the flathead bolt is able to sit flush with the top of the control panel. You shouldn't really feel it when you're playing games. There are many other methods for doing this, but again, I'm just doing it the way that works for me. I'll be countersinking those a little bit more to fine tune their fit, but this is fine for now. Coming up next will be a whole bunch of wiring and finishing things to get this arcade going. I'll be painting the cabinet, I'll be pulling apart the TV to get to the speakers, I'm going to be wiring some speakers and adding T-molding. Stay tuned for that video. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and help support this channel. Please leave any comments below. I'll do my best to answer them as timely as I am able to. Have an awesome day.